Yo, it's Elot, and today I have kind of a fun video idea for you. Um, this was inspired by a Twitch chatter that frequents, um, who is a wyvern enjoyer like myself, as I'm sure many of you are, who doesn't like wyverns. Um, and they asked me a hypothetical question. They said, who would be on your Mount Rushmore of Fire Emblem wyvern riders? And I thought that was a fun mental exercise. And, you know, with all the archetype talk lately, hopefully you're not sick of it. I was like, who's my Mount Rushmore of, you know, anything, you know, whether it's a class or an archetype or whatever, any any group of characters that are somewhat similar, who would I put on the Mount Rushmore, basically? Um, if you don't happen to know, because you're not an American or the American education system failed you, uh, Mount Rushmore is basically a giant stone sculpture of four famous U.S. presidents. And the reason they were chosen for it is because the artist felt like they were like the most iconic or like the things that were happening throughout history happened while they were president. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to sort of transfer that to Fire Emblem. Uh, the only thing I want to say here is these are my personal rankings. This is like where we start, the basis for everything. So this is going to be very biased and there is going to be a lot of favoritism. And these are the characters that are most iconic to me. But I'm going to have a follow-up video to this, and I'm going to bring someone else into the discussion uh, to make it a little bit more objective, because I think that's a fun way to do it as well. Um, because just because a, a Fire Emblem character is popular or maybe even controversial, like the cultural influence kind of thing, just because they're big in the community doesn't necessarily mean that they're important to me personally, and that can go both ways. So I think in that video, we'll get a little bit more into that territory. Um, but for now, this is mostly just my opinions. So fuck it, you know, <laughs> like don't get mad because I don't put Ike on the list in this hypothetical scenario that I wouldn't put Ike on any top list of anything. That dude is awesome. Speaking of which, uh, we're going to start with the Lords and I'm going to start with Ike because I fucking love this character. Ike is Ike. Ike is the goat. And if you need me to elaborate more than that, uh, there's no convincing you of anything. I've said already so much about this character, and he's just, he's just awesome. I won't talk your ear off about him again. I love him so much. And I think, honestly, my prediction for the second video in this series, I think Ike will actually stay up here. Um, I think he's iconic for like the grand scheme of things as well as just iconic for me personally being the first like non-royal lord just his regular personality his story and everything i think he'll probably stay up here that's not exactly a hot take ike is fucking cool man he's my favorite character in anything ever made okay so the second lord that i want to talk about is sigurd dude sigurd is cool okay Sigurd not only is a busted gameplay unit and is insanely fun to use, but he's a Lord character that, especially for the time, really deviated um, in the sense of, like, a lot of Lords in Fire Emblem, like, the sort of template for a Lord is a nice person, smile, that wants to do the right thing, and, like, that's kind of it a lot of the time. You know, like, a lot of, a lot of Lords, like, tend to get cloned from Marth, in this regard, uh, people like Roy get compared to Marth. Elliewood, I think, gets compared to Marth a little bit. Like, they're just kind of regular nice guys, and there's nothing wrong with that. But some people might find them boring. And Sigurd is those things, but he's also a very impulsive person. He's also a very passionate person. And he's also a very emotional person. And that combination with the awful world that is FE4 and 5 is really really interesting like just the fact that he he does these things that have good intent behind them and still gets punished for it in the end like that's that's just so interesting to me and that really doesn't happen all that much if you think about it um you know just take engage for example that's the most recent game i feel like when when something goes wrong for a lord generally speaking one it either doesn't go wrong Two, it goes wrong and they get bailed out somehow like someone else does something to save them from their own mistakes and maybe they learn from it maybe they don't 
and then the third thing that happens is they fuck up so bad that they die, and then they just come back to life, possibly more than once, Alir. Um, and that's really stupid, because then it's like there's no stakes at all in the writing, um, but FE4 does not do that at all, and I love Sigurd so much for that reason. And he's dripped out, dude. I fucking love his fit. So, third lord up is my boy Leaf. Dude, it's Leaf, man. I fucking love Leaf. I love him in FE4. I love him in Thracia. I, I love that Leaf is like the underdog kind of lord um, in a way that is really inspiring. Um, because there are two types of underdogs in anything, really. There's the underdog that is inadequate for one reason or another, and they stay that way. And that's kind of it. And you might root for him a little bit. You know, someone I would put in this category is Roy. Roy is consistently like an underdog guy. He's really not great at anything. But you still kind of root for him. You root for him because you don't expect him to really do all that much. So when he does something kind of cool, you're like happy for him. But Leaf is that. But also, he has so much potential. And he puts in the work time and time again. And then you see that Master Knight promotion in FE4 after everything he's been through in FE4. And then when you play Thracia, all the shit he went through there. And it's just, it's beautiful, dude. Like, you feel proud of him and also a little bit fucking impressed. And if you're on, you know, the, the enemy team, you're fucking scared. Dude, like, he's he's my favorite unit in FE4 besides Seliph. Seliph is just an in incredible unit to use. So fun. I uh, hate his character though, um, but Leaf is my second favorite and it's very close because he doesn't have a holy weapon in Gen 2 of FE4 and just still hangs at the front line with everybody because of how versatile he is. And I love him so much, dude. I love him so much. He deserves so much more credit, I feel like. Play Thracia, people. You are missing out. And then the fourth lord that I want to talk about for my personal ranking on the Mount Rushmore is Micaiah. Uh, you might have guessed it simply because I'm such a big Tellius fanboy, but I'm a big Micaiah fan. Um, reason being is I've just come to appreciate her character more and more over time. Uh, initially when I played Radiant Dawn, I really didn't care about her, and I went from not caring about her to actually disliking her. And when I look back on it, they weren't really for any fair reasons. Um, the, the initial part of it was like, okay, where's Ike? Ike's in this game, right? Okay, we're at part two now. Where is Ike? I don't see him. I see it, almost everybody else. Where is Ike? And then part three shows up and you're like, finally, dude, the game started for real this time. Ike is here. I don't care about anything else. I don't even remember what happened in part one. And then Micaiah starts to fight against Ike. And you're like, oh... Now I hate you. <laughs> now you suck. You know, you gotta root for the home team. So, that's not fair. That's really not fair. And when I, when I played the game more and more, I sort of looked at things a little differently each time I would play it. And I sort of understand the purpose of Micaiah's character because she's very different from Ike in every way. And that is kind of the point. Um, and the interesting sort of duality of Micaiah and Soth is interesting to me because Soth is basically the presence of Ike in the Dawn Brigade. And although, you know, Micaiah and Soth trust each other very much, they tend to disagree on like very key things at times, i.e. Peleus. And Micaiah being a character that sort of believes in the good in people and would rather, you know, take the pain herself than to see someone else get hurt sort of makes sense with why she would fall into the whole Peleus Izuka trap and Peleus just being a complete fucking moron makes Micaiah look bad and that's that's the thing that's so tragic and kind of sad about it is that I realized I didn't really hate Micaiah this whole time I kind of just hated Peleus most of that shit was his fault the only thing Micaiah did wrong was to trust him in the first place Peleus sucks I hate that dude but Micaiah like being put in an interesting position where it's like, okay, you either choose to abandon your home country and all the people within it that have already suffered for several years now after the Mad King War and all that, or you protect them 
and she chooses to protect them. She chooses to defend her own, and I gotta respect that, you know what I mean? And she's not like a big wimp about it. She's not a big crybaby about it. She does it because she wants to, and you know, she's kind of strong-willed. She's kind of a mature character for the most part, for the most part, um, and I really appreciate that too because, you know, it's easy, and like, I'm, I'm with Soth, like, 100% of the time whenever he says something that's a great character but when Soth is fighting against Micaiah about like you know I don't want to fight the fucking Lagoos we shouldn't be doing this this is a mistake I would never do this Ike would never do this Micaiah just having the strength to say like it's not that fucking simple bro I don't like it either but you know what man like this is where we are now and I'm not gonna abandon my own people you know I fucked up by trusting Peleus obviously but I can't just leave. That would be so immature to just like throw a fit and leave. And that that's so sad and so interesting and so cool. And I love Tellius so much. And Micaiah is good. Okay. Uh, so now we get to the Wyverns. This one is probably going to be the most difficult category for me. Uh, because there... I think there's only like one Wyvern in the whole series that I dislike. The rest of them I go from either being indifferent to or absolutely loving them to death. Uh, there, there's like six that I want to put in this thing, but I'm only going to pick four. So, first up, if you've seen some of my other videos, or if you've been in my streams, you already know what's coming. We're going for Melody from FV6. Uh, she's by far my favorite Wyvern, um, and I just, I just love everything about her. She's an incredible combat unit. If you ask me, she's the best unit in FE6. You gotta love the red. And I'm also a big fan of her supports. And I kind of love the the sort of trope of like the really loyal retainer. That's like interesting. Cause there are boring retainers out there, like take Mavia or something from Engage. Don't care. But people like Finn really get to me for some reason. I just love them so much. Um and then on top of her just being an incredible combat unit in-game is very, very fun for me. Uh, she's she's my favorite part of playing fe6 for sure. I always 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 train her and It's just it's just a fucking blast. I don't know what else to say. She's the goat dude. I love her uh, and Then two and three are from the same game uh, These probably won't surprise many people either. So we're gonna go fe10 har specifically fe10 um, And then Jill I'm using Jill's fe10 portrait it counts for both in terms of gameplay because she's good in both but she stands out to me more in radiant dawn as does har for obvious reasons um but i love both the characters in both games uh so har even even if you haven't played radiant dawn you probably know har i think everybody knows har everybody knows why har is broken and he's really fun to use and he's a really chill cool character too gotta love the eye patch as well jill is a really cool character because of all those kind of things too minus the eye patch um but watching her growth through fe9 and then into fe10 is something that i really really enjoy watching every time you know someone coming out of their their sort of preconceived notions of the world and you know getting to experience it rather than reading about it or being told about it and making up your own decisions on it and becoming like a, a really stand-up person because of that that is so fucking cool, bro. They need to do that more. Jill is awesome. I love her. And then fourth. Fourth, I have a couple that I that I would want to talk about. Um, and I'm actually kind of struggling. I want to put Zeese up here because I love Zeese. And Zeese is very, very funny. And I also want to put... I also could put Ivy. I'm surprised how much I liked Ivy in Engage. But Ivy hasn't been out for very long, so to put her on the Mount Rushmore maybe seems a little bit wrong. Um, but the other one I want to talk about and that I'm probably going to put on this list is Dean from Thracia. Kind of a deep cut here. Um, but Dean is super, super cool. Dean is cool for a lot of the obvious wyvern reasons. You know, he comes in ready to go, kill everything, pretty good. Um, you know, Super Kanto pretty tanky flies you know all that all that normal stuff he's cool for all those things but dean is also really cool to me because on top of those things he has a personal weapon that gives him vantage 
and has a brave effect, which is crazy. And then also, Thracia has a dismount mechanic. So if you're outdoors, you get on your mount. And if you're indoors, you're forced to dismount. And normally, that's a pretty bad thing. Um, because you take a unit like Finn, when Finn is mounted and he has the Brave Lance and he's killing things, no one does it like he does it. But when you dismount him indoors and have to give him an iron sword, and that's really the best he can do, it's pretty hard to watch. Um, but Dean has the special niche in that game to where he can do both. And in Thracia, being an indoor unit and an outdoor unit is actually pretty rare because he comes with a rank swords just right off the bat on top of everything else that he already does well. And that's so cool. And he's so fun to use in Thracia. And I'm a big fan. Thracia bias, don't care. Um, so then the third category here is mage slash sage. It's a little bit loose. Um, I'm more going for combat mage here. Uh, in the future, if we do more of these or whatever, I can make a more staff-oriented category. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, the first two I'll talk about sort of together um, that I think of are Asbel and you guessed it, Seti Boy. These two are awesome. Kaga loved his Wind Sages and goddammit so do I. Asbel is crazy. You get him like five chapters into the game, and once you get him a couple points of speed, he just rolls the rest of it. It really is that simple. He's so fun. Personal weapon, FCM3, leaf support. You gotta love him, dude. And then Sed is basically that that just comes way later and requires no work. For Sed, he goes crazy in Thracia. I love his character. I love his conversation with Leaf in chapter 23. That shit is so good. And then on top of that, said in fe4 is really cool because it I mean it's fe4 said um but i found out pretty recently on my last run of fe4 that said is crazy no matter who his father is he doesn't need for seti straight up he just doesn't need it um which i didn't know but i had heard for a while and i saw it for myself and that dude is a beast no matter what i think said goes up here pretty easily too Third up for Mage Sage, this is probably the most personally biased one. I don't think most people would argue with these two, uh, but my my third pick here is Lou. I love Lou, dude. I love Lou so much. Lou warms my heart. Banana Mage go crazy, and I always, always, always train him in FE6. I always have him pretty much glued to Melody as soon as she comes in, and a lot of times it feels like those two take on like half the map and then the rest of my team takes on the other half of the map it's just really funny to me i love those two so much they do support together even though fe6 supports take forever you know it's something a little extra in there that motivates me to do that every time but those two are my my goats for fe6 they're by far my favorites lou's a sweet kid he's had kind of a hard life but i, I don't know dude i i just love him I just love him. I don't know if it's, like, the older brother in me or what, but, like, I wouldn't let anything happen to that kid. <laughs> Please ignore my last Iron Man. <laughs> oh, God. I don't want to talk about that. Uh, so, fourth up... Anyway, we love Lou. Fourth up is actually way the fuck down here, and it is Lysithia. Lysithia is by far my favorite part of Three Houses. Uh, by a long shot. Uh, when I say Melody's my favorite part of FE6, it's like picking one of your favorite children. Uh, but picking Lysithia out of three houses, to me, is like, would I rather eat it Five Guys or Burger King? It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to Five Guys, dude. Like, come on. Uh, like, are we serious? Um, but anyway, uh, Lysithia is really cool. And it's hard for me to pick a lot of these later characters in like three houses and engage. I think Fates has had enough time to to mature, like within the community, if that makes sense. Um, Three Houses is maybe almost there, uh, but Engage is like brand new, so opinions are just running rampant about everything. And Lysithia stands out in that regard because like, yeah, you can make any unit in Three Houses any class, and they could do anything and get any skill pretty much. 
But Lysithia is so iconic in her base class and going Gremory with the Thursis and nuking things from five tiles away. And she's also a very sad character, like in terms of like, she has a sad backstory. She's a very funny character though. I love her so much and she deserves to be up here, I think, despite being so new, like relatively speaking, so very new. Really good character, really good character. Um, then we get to the Pegasus Knights. Uh, the first one I have to put up here because I would feel stupid if I didn't. Uh, Sheeta. Sheeta is a classic. Sheeta is broken, especially in Shadow Dragon. Uh, she's good in New Mystery, but she's not, she's not broken, broken. Uh, but in Shadow Dragon, she's just nuts. And I also really enjoy her character. Like, the, the recruitments that she has are very, very funny to read. Um, I also love, like, the wholesome Marth Sheeta moments, you know, I can't even lie. She's the OG. She's the George Washington. I can't not put her up here. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I could put Marth up here for the Lord's one, but Marth isn't, like, particularly interesting to me personally, despite being the first one. And I don't think being the first at something automatically makes you the GOAT, but... Sheeta, Sheeta, Sheeta maybe is. <laughs> I don't know. That's hard to argue with. Sheeta's crazy. Uh, and then the second one from the same universe is Pala. I picked the new mystery portrait because it's very, very slightly more green. Um, I was, back when I played Echoes the first time, a fan of Pala and Katria. To this day, I still don't give a shit about Est, no matter what game it is. I just don't care. But back when I played Echoes, I was like, you know, I think I like Katria a little bit more for some reason. I don't really know why, but I just do. Um, and then I played New Mystery of the Emblem. And I switched over so fast and so hard. Pella is crazy, dude. Pella is, like, it's impossible for her to be bad in New Mystery. And that is crazy. Like, the only unit that is consistently better than her is Chris. Because someone thought Chris was a good idea I guess um, like dude she she is so crazy in that game and I actually like her character too what little bits of characterization I have seen um, that's really cool and also just like sort of a funny note I guess uh, the last two Catrias that I've had in my new mystery runs have been consistently so bad I can't lie it has sort of sort of hurt her reputation a little bit too so it's like a couple things, uh, but Pala has become by far my favorite of the White Wings. Um, and being the OG of the White Wing group, you know, uh, that's pretty cool. I think I think that counts for something. So it's a lot of things for these two, I think, that deserve to be up here. Uh, they're definitely two of my favorites. Third up for Pegasus Knights is cheating. She is cheating. It is Vanessa from FE8. Nope, not not there. You, you go there. Vanessa is cheating because she is a Pegasus Knight that promotes into Wyvern Knight. Um, these two go to Draco Knight in the DS games, but it's not really a choice. You need, like, the Elysian Whip DLC for Shadow Dragon, and there's, like, one or two Elysian Whips in New Mystery, but I don't know why you would do that over Draco Knight. Maybe there's something I'm just not aware of yet. But Vanessa is a choice, and she gets Pierce, which is hilarious. You probably know I'm a big fan of that by now. She's so fun. She She's by far my favorite part of FE8. Closely followed by Seth, because uh, Seth is really cool too. Uh, but that that's an easy placement for me. I don't even have to think about that one. And then the final one for Pegasus Knights is FE9 Marcia. Uh, I like her character in both Tellius games, of course. But my love for her gameplay really does come from FE9. There are a lot of broken units in FE9, and there are a lot of scrubby enemies in FE9. It is not a hard game by any means. But with that being said, I still hold the opinion that if you break the game with Marcia over any other character as your carry, it does not get more fun than that. Like, it's all these little things, these little sort of edges that she has over Jill for so much of the game. And she, she capitalizes on those resources so hard. And when you just find goofy ways to shove chain and dance and kill a boss with a forge and end the map in one turn with Marcia, 
without using a warp because that's not in the game it feels pretty good man it's pretty funny dude <laughs> i think i have i have a stupid video of that too but you wouldn't know it's a fire emblem video because it's a really stupid thumbnail oh uh, but yeah marcy is cool i love her personality too like just the way she talks her mannerisms very very funny very enjoyable her brother is the worst and sword masters uh i i'll be i'll be up front here uh there are a few sword masters that i absolutely adore and then the rest of them kind of don't care about like there's a lot of sword masters i really don't care about like you can't sit here and tell me that anybody gives a shit about navarre i won't believe you but everybody gives a shit about rutger dude everybody knows this guy's name because i just said it two seconds ago this is rutger he is in fe6 where sword masters are actually good and he comes in in chapter four and he's good for the whole game holy shit that's crazy uh rutger has things like niches skills whatever you want to call them that are good in fe6 and that not a lot of units have in fe6 like doubling having consistent crit rates being accurate and he he just eats everybody up in that game and it's so cool and those things aren't as valued in other games especially when they're easier and that's really sad <laughs> that, that makes sword masters so so bad it makes them so bad that i would call them useless in a lot of games you know games like fe7 or fe9 even fe8 even if they have good stats they're just useless because they're doing nothing on enemy phase and the enemy quality is very low but rutger is faced with scary enemies and he mows them down like it's nothing he's so cool dude he's so cool i love his backstory i love his supports with Karel. rutger is awesome everybody should know this guy's name and in the same vein where is he Karel. 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 i love Karel's gameplay in fe6 reverse recruitment but that is cheating so i'll be up front he's not really up here for his gameplay so much um, but I find his character so interesting that I'm putting him up here for me personally. Um, short hair Corel is best Corel, so we put the FE6 portrait over the FE7 one. Um, I also have a video about Corel. Perhaps you've seen it, perhaps you haven't. Um, so I've, I've talked enough about his story and, you know, the things that he says and does. Um, so I won't go into that so much here. But I think that character being so interesting to me and the way they implement that into the gameplay even for the short time that he's there in fe6 is so so cool and i i gotta i gotta put him there man i i simply have to i simply have to uh third up is also kind of a deep cut uh it is avel my thracia bias is really starting to show huh um <laughs> avel is awesome Avel, when you get her in the beginning of Thracia, mows everything down because she's doubling, critting, dodging, whatever. Flame sword as well. And that's really fun. Um, and then you find out that she's hard coded into the game to where she cannot die. Quite literally. The game will not let her die. That's funny. That's really cool. And then you get to chapter 5. And I won't spoil what happens in chapter 5 if you haven't played Thracia yet because you should play it. Um, but god damn it chapter 5 goes crazy um, and then Avel also gives you an excuse to play one of the best maps in Thracia 24x and no I am not being ironic that map is good I don't want to hear it uh, Avel's a cool character in both the games that she is in I love her so much I love her design I love her character I love her gameplay 10 out of 10 and then the fourth one is it's Mia it's Mia it's FE10 Mia uh, she's she's been a favorite of mine for so so long um really really i i consistently use her in fe10 like pretty much every run i'll use her um it's not very hard to do or anything um but i always do it fe9 i'll do it if i feel like it uh, but she's not particularly great in fe9 you know it's sword master it, it's just kind of whatever it's unfortunate but i like her character a lot the purple hair goes hard and her gameplay in Radiant Dawn is just always so fun for me the whole way through. Because you go from, okay, we'll give her Adept on the first chapter. So if she's not one-rounding, she might Adept and or crit and kill things. And then once she gets some levels 
she more consistently does that as well as just straight up one rounding and then you get her to tier three she gets astra which just goes absolutely bonkers and then you give her a londite for that sweet victory lap at the end of the game and that's all super fun for me i i love her so much i've loved her for a long long time one of my favorite units in fe10 okay so that is my personal rankings for the mount rushmore fire emblem characters of these archetypes feel free to let me know yours uh, in any of these categories. Um, and like I said, I'm going to have a follow-up video where we get objective with this. So I think that'll be fun too. If that interests you, uh, don't forget to check that out. But until then, peace out, take care, and thank you for watching.